Hello, Alexander. Hello, Sophie. Thank you for taking the time to share your 2024 perspective with us. So we all started 2023 with the idea that the, that the US were heading toward a recession. It uh, eventually didn't happen as the economy grew by 2.3%. Do you think it's more likely to happen in 2024? Short answer is no. <laughs> uh, in 2023, indeed, we moved away from a recession. Then we talked a lot about resilience and eventually we got some reacceleration in the economy. Uh, ourselves, we never really fell into the pessimist camp and we revised several times. Uh, for 2024, we think that the US economy will continue to do well. We have expectations of 1.2% uh, growth for 2024. That's above consensus. And the main reasons being that the US consumer continued to be very resilient at a time where the employment market is also very resilient. And the, the last data uh, in, uh, in the inflation in the US were quite reassuring and markets are now pricing up to four uh, rate cuts for this year, for next year. What's your view on the, on the calendar in the US and in the Europe? Indeed, uh, we have a disinflation process that is in place now for about a year. We have an economy that is cooling down, so it's the perfect Godilock scenario for central banks. For 2024, we expect the Federal Reserve to cut between 75 and 100 basis points, but importantly will be the timing, and we think there will be a possibility to start cutting already in the second quarter for the US. As far as the ECB is concerned, we have changed our mind, actually. We are now looking for 25 to 50 basis points of cuts, maybe a bit closer to the Federal Reserve, and probably a timing that will be around Q3 for the European Central Bank. And what asset allocation would you recommend to navigate this new era? So we have a constructive outlook, as you probably understood, for, for next year. It means that we think both bonds with that offer really, really attractive yield will become a very important part of, the, of building the portfolio. Don't give up on equity, so we have a pro risk stance also on equities overall in terms of asset allocation. And zooming on in on equities, uh, what do you prefer in terms of uh, geographic and um, thematic allocation? So in terms of geography, uh, the US, it remains where the leadership is, both from a growth perspective, uh, but also this is where technology, we think that in, uh, artificial intelligence uh, will be an important driver for the, uh, the whole market. On the other side, emerging markets, which have been certainly under-owned by global investors. Two-thirds of world growth is coming from emerging markets. Profit growth is also very, very strong. So we think it will be very, very important also to remain exposed to emerging markets. And then in terms of sector, we think that particularly the energy transition sector that had a bad performance actually in 2023, with the expectations of uh, red cuts in next year, that's probably a great opportunity as well to look at. And to conclude, in terms of safe haven, which one would you pick and choose to navigate better these markets in 2024? So I see the three usual suspects. Uh, we start with the Japanese yen, which by definition in the currency remains a safe haven currency. Uh, nevertheless, that will be much more dependent, I think, on how the Federal Reserve is likely to cut rates than the Bank of Japan. Secondly is gold. I think gold benefits from this structural demand, uh, particularly for banks, from central banks. They bought about 800 tons of gold this year, and we know that during risk aversion episode, gold is, fa is favored. And lastly, and I think that volatility, particularly in equities, remain extremely low. So it means that for investors and clients, we'll have the possibility to build some hedging position should our uh, positive scenario uh, have some troubles and potentially building positions at good levels today can be attractive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sophie. And let's buckle up for 2024. Indeed. <laughs>